an era, an entire geological era is coming to a close in our time. The you know, scientists divide up life into these major eras, and the one we're living in is called the Cenozoic. It's the 65 million years since the demise of the dinosaurs. And so, in terms of life at that level, we're at the end of that. In particular, we are actually eliminating um, the species of our time at a rate of 20,000 a year. Now, now, species always go extinct, but they if there were no humans around today, there, there'd be maybe one species going extinct a year. So we've pushed it up thousand times. So our impact is changing the function of the planet. And that this here's the amazing thing. This will be news a million years from now. Because these mass extinctions only take place once every hundred million years. So we're living in an event that comes along once every hundred million years. We are actually eliminating um, the species of our time at a rate of 20,000 a year. 20,000 a year. 20,000 a year? Did he just make that up? The number of species doomed to extinction each year is 27,000. Each day it is 74, and each hour, 3. 27,000 a year. At that rate, that's 500,000 species extinct just since I've been born. If that's not a mass extinction, I don't know what is. But I got to thinking, I've been hearing these crazy species extinction numbers for my entire life. But if 500,000 species have gone extinct just since I've opened my eyes, where are all the corpses? According to Wilson, 27,000 species die each year. If 0.1% of all species are birds, and 0.05% of all species are mammals, then some quick math will tell us to expect that 27 birds die each year, and 13.5 mammals die each year. However, Wilson is quick to note some groups, like the larger birds and mammals, are more susceptible to extinction than most. This means that for birds and mammals, we should expect a much higher incidence of extinction than the average expected rate of 27 for birds and 13.5 for mammals. I went to the two most respected sources on extinction records. That would be the ICUN Red List and the CREO catalog done by the American Museum of Natural History. We can see the extinction records peak at 1.6 extinctions per year for birds in 1900 and 0.6 for mammals in uh, 1900 and again in 1964. Here's a graph of mammal extinctions in modern times using raw data from the red list. We can see it peak at 4, but most of the time it stays between 0 and 1. In fact, the average for this entire time period is 0.27 extinctions per year. For birds, it is 3.7, and for fish, 0.57. The point is, there is no data to back up these extraordinary species extinction claims. They are one of the Earth's most important commodities for sustaining life, and we're cutting them down. We must be the stupidest creatures on the face of the planet. Deforestation is said to be the major cause of species extinction today. A recent article in Conservation Biology states, Evidence to date suggests that deforestation is currently, and is projected to continue to be, the prime direct and indirect cause of reported extirpations. The Red List database, however, lists no continental bird or mammal ever going extinct from deforestation even partially. I am talking about 500 years of slash and burn, rape of the rainforest destruction. Yet no bird or mammal has ever gone extinct from deforestation on any continent, ever. In Palau, one species of fruit bat was subject to deforestation and went extinct, and the CREO fish database referred to several fish species as having deforestation as a possible contributing factor to their extinction. We swim like dolphins sometimes. This amateur YouTube video with approximately 90,000 views makes the claim that deforestation causes tree species to go extinct. However, a search of the Red List database for vascular plants that live in the forest, that are threatened by agriculture and logging and wood harvesting, shows that there is only one plant that meets these conditions. That plant is called the woolly stalked begonia. And, uh, when we read the description, we find that it is not a tree, but instead a little herb.
There is simply no evidence to back the claim that deforestation causes significant species extinction. But if forests are so rich in species density and we're cutting them down, how is that not eliminating species? Forest communities are relatively uniform over tens of thousands of square miles. Populations of forest animals are similarly widespread and are very difficult to eradicate. Our good friend EO has stated that we destroy 1% of the Earth's forest every year since the 80s. But also during the 80s, scientists realized they could objectively measure deforestation using satellites. We would not have to rely upon estimates anymore. Since NASA started measuring, we have seen a 6.2% increase in the amount of plant matter on land, primarily in the form of forests. But how has this happened? I thought we were cutting down the rainforest. Ultimately, the more latent carbon there is in the atmosphere, the more the Earth's biosphere will adjust to take advantage of it. Experts estimate that the last remaining rainforests are likely to be consumed in less than 40 years. That's possibly mine and your lifetimes, certainly your kids' lifetimes, and most certainly your grandchildren's lifetimes. 40 years time, the Amazon is not going to be there. Actually, according to a 2003 paper in Science, the Amazon rainforest experienced the greatest growth out of any forest area in the world. When I was compiling the red list data for the 78 mammal species that went extinct in the last 500 years, I found something pretty interesting. If I asked you to guess what the most common cause of extinction was, what would you say? Climate change? Uh, hunting? Well, actually it was rats. Rats. When Europeans came in their boats, they brought rats with them, and these rats were very tough creatures. In fact, they ate 15 other entire species of rat. They outlasted two species of rats on Christmas Island through disease, and still to this day, European rats thrive on every one of those islands. You might say, oh, so it was invasive species. But if I created a new technology that made the toaster obsolete and everybody had my new technology in their kitchen, would you say I was creating an invasive technology? If I had a company called Ford Motor that made automobiles while some people still used horses and buggies, would you say I was creating an invasive company? No, you'd say I better fill that economic niche, and that's the same thing you should say in biology. A 2009 Autobahn Society report entitled Birds and Climate Change showed an average northern shift in North American bird species over the past 40 years. Autobahn saw this shift and published their conclusion. It is the complete picture of widespread movement and the failure of some species to move at all that illustrate the impacts of climate change on birds. They are sending us a powerful signal that we need to take policy action to curb climate change and its impacts and help wildlife and ecosystems adapt to unavoidable habitat changes even as we work to curb climate change itself. We need global warming legislation that will help birds and wildlife survive what's coming. What they failed to mention though is that data from their own report showed that the number of species with increasing populations topped those with decreasing populations by a factor of 2 to 1. So it's all well and good, North America's bird species are by and large successfully adapting their behavior to a changing climate. What's the problem? Actually, Autobahn was at loss to find one, instead trying to convince us that evidence of climate change is reason enough to try to stop it. Apparently, Autobahn knows what the best climate is for birds. This brings you and I to a final conclusion. Humans have an astounding capacity for perpetuating ideas without evidence. They are also really good at asking you to do something for them. Every one of the ideas of the tellers that I've talked about today has asked me to do something for them, and they've tried to convince me to do it by appealing to my emotion. Every one of them held the belief that humans somehow are the stupidest species on the entire planet. We must be the stupidest creatures on the face of the planet. I guarantee you that none of the people that were trying to convince me of these ideas ever held them up to the flame of skeptical inquiry. If we don't be careful, we're going to be led by those who do not require evidence for their ideas into an entire geologic era where humans think that they as sentient beings can pass moral judgment over the interactions of all the species on the earth.